Welcome everybody. Uh, mashallah, today is our second session uh, talking about tafsir of Surah al -Naba. Last time we started with the first few ayahs and we mentioned that the uh, uh, non-believers are asking and they are inquiring. But the way they are inquiring, they are inquiring about something great. But this something is uh, something that they don't want to understand, they don't want to believe in, they don't want to get more information about. The only thing they are asking is that because they are mocking and they are making fun and they, even if they get uh, enough information to believe in, they are opposing it, they are belying it. So they are asking about the great news, which is the day after, which they are in disagreement. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala severely threatens and severely warns those people, those who deny the day after, because they will come to know and they will know what is this day after. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will go on and he will talk about the day after. But before he starts talking about the day after, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a little bit is going to talk about something else. So he is not going to talk about the day of judgment. He is going to bring proofs of his abilities and his power. And we will know later why he is going to do that. So from Ayah 6 till Ayah 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us visual proofs. So he will start by saying, Alam naj'ali al-arda mihada. Have we not made the earth as a bed? as an established, firm, resting place for people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created earth and prepared it for his slaves. So Allah started now here in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with the earth that we live on. Allah made this, this earth as mihada. In Arabic, the word mihada means a bed, a comfortable bed. So this is the first sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Then he moved to talk about al-jibal, the mountains. So he says, wal-jibal awtada, and the mountains as pegs. So what, what is the relation now here? We have earth, we have mountains. The word awtada in Arabic is uh, uh, a word that's used to make things firm. So the word pegs makes you feel that something is firm. So the mountains here, the, the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a role to make the earth firm. How? The earth moves and shakes. So the mountains are like the pegs of a tent that makes the tent firm. So the mountains make the, uh, the uh, earth firm in place. But why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the picture of the pegs here? He did so to make it closer to the mind of the people who lived in tents at that time when the Quran was revealed. So they know how useful the pegs are to their tents. They live in tents. And they have to make the tents, their tents were huge. So they have to have huge pegs to hold the tents firm. So this is an example of something that they use. They know 
something they know and something they make themselves and something something they can see by their eyes so this is an example of their own environment there are different types of pets the big the strong and also we have different types of mountains we have huge mountains we have big mountains we have high mountains we have and also we have just low tiny small mountains um assalamu alaikum sister i'm sorry to do interrupt you but one of the questions from the audience is which surah are we on right now uh, surah an-naba we are in surah an-naba and we are on ayah 7 exactly. this is the first surah of juz 30 and uh if you are having uh the quran with you it's on page 582 if you are having the same quran page numbering exactly thank right. you you're welcome so now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these are now we have the mountain we have the earth and we have the mountains So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not it's not a coincidence that he found these these miracles that he created these miracles but that's not enough these are just two signs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to go on so he says wa khalaqnakum azwaja and we have created you in pairs male and female So reproduction is achieved. And for people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjected the earth. Now see the connection between the ayahs. So everything is related to everything. So he has created people in pairs. Then then we made sleep for you. وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتًا So what does this mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we said, we have made your sleep as a thing for rest. We all perform and function and do here uh, and go and come and do uh, this and that and this and that during the day. But we need some time to rest. So sleep and rest are important for us. Sleep was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, it's one of the greatest bounty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for people. So when when we are super tired, when we are sleepy, we take a nap. We go to bed. If we have an intention before going to bed, then we can move this thing from being something that we are going to uh, uh, enjoy into ibadah how can we do that if we have an intention before we go to bed that ya allah we are going to rest yes we are going to go to do this just for your sake so that when we get up we will be fresh again we will have energy back again so we will be ready to worship you So we gain the pleasure of dunya and the reward of akhirah. Now, it is said that sleep is like death. How? So when someone sleeps, then he can do nothing, he is sleeping. Death, he is sleep, he is it's a longer sleep for both both is have a stop of movement but the difference is with sleep we can go back to life we can function again we can have another day we can have another 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 time that, that, that we are going to do some things again but for death خلاص, that's it So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created sleep has made sleep for us 
just to rest. وجعلنا الليل لباسا. And we made the night as a covering. A covering of what? The night is dark. So it's shade and darkness cover everything. Earlier in older days, uh, when thieves wanted to go to rob something, they would go at night. Now they would have their guns and they would go during the day. They don't care. But uh, darkness covers everything. Anything can be done in darkness. So a gnome sleep is from the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made, has given us. So a layl is an indication for darkness. It's an indication for sleeping. And whether it is actually done during the day or during the night, sleeping is something very important. Take, for example, a sick person who is in pain. They give him sedation so that he sleeps. When he sleeps, the minute he falls, uh, uh, the minute he sleeps, then his pain stops. He won't feel the pain. Until he wakes up again, the pain will come back. So during the sleep time, he didn't feel the pain. And this is a blessing. So what is suffering actually is the soul itself, but not the hurt organ. So this is the mercy of sleeping. This is the mercy of falling uh, uh, to sleep. So the layl, the night is a cover. People are sleeping. And we have made the day as means of sustenance. We made it luminous. We made it shining so that people would move around. They would be able to go to work, to earn for their living. So the, the day, the day is... Uh, nothing but means of trying to get provision. Everyone is responsible. Some people are responsible for themselves. Some people are responsible for their mothers, for their fathers, for their uh, siblings, for their families. For uh, uh, The husband is responsible for the, uh, uh, for the wife, for the children. So everyone needs to work. And they can do that during the day. It's, it will be so refreshing. It will be so... Uh, uh, helpful to do the uh, to have the uh, day to work in to get the sustenance and we have built above you seven strong what are these seven they are the seven heavens in their vastness, in their perfection. Imagine that if you want to build a house, you will have poles to hold the walls, the ceiling, the, uh, the roof and everything. Look at the skies. There is not a single pole that would hold the skies. This is perfection. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and he perfects when he creates. He adorned, he, he created the uh, uh, seven heavens in layers. And this is what he says in Surah Al-Mulk, الَّذِي خَلَقَ سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتٍ طِبَاقًا One about the other. So he created the seven heavens with all moving stars. And each star goes around and moves in its own orbit, in its own path. If one star moves away from it, its path, then disasters will happen. 
So Allah has created and has perfected what he created. وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا مُحَاجًا And we have made a shining lamp. So the radiant sun that gives light to earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this, this earth. So imagine the uncountable benefits of, of the sun to the earth. Imagine if the sun was a little closer to us, what will happen? Or imagine if it was a little further for us, what will happen? This is creation and perfection. وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَهَاجًا We have made a shining lamp in the sky that will benefit the earth and everyone who lives on the earth. وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ مَا أَنْثَجَّاجًا And we have sent down from the clouds water in abundance. المُعصرات, the clouds. The clouds that are filled with rain, that pour out continuously. So thajjaja is continuous flowing. Sometimes it rains here, sometimes it rains uh, uh, in another country, sometimes it rains uh, in both countries, sometimes. So it's continuous flowing. But why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send down this? abundance, this uh, uh, khayr, this water. Why did he send it down? This rain. لِنُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا So that we may produce there with grain and vegetables. So great benefits will come out of this rain which will we will get so much fruit, so much uh, plants, so much the earth will give us its khair, its bounties. And this is all for you people. So not only just grains and vegetables, وَجَنَّاتٍ alfafa. Also, gardens that are vast, that are of luxurious growth. Gardens of countless varieties of taste and fragrances. Imagine the countless number of fruits we have, of the whatever is uh, produced so to uh, so that people would feed on. So with these 10 ayahs, what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us examples of true, powerful, majestic things that he has created. So these powerful visual proofs are true. No one can deny them. And no one can even claim that he has created these remarkable things. No one. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He is the only creator. He is the almighty. He is the eternal. He has created everything and everybody in this dunya. He sent us prophets and he sent us messengers. Why? If imagine that your son did something that you didn't like, so you, you punished him, he will look at you and he will say, Mama, you never told me that I am not supposed to do this. And he is right. In order not to have the same picture in the day after when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish those who disobeyed, but how would they know that they disobeyed? They, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets and sent messengers. 
He gave them a message to people. He told them. He threatened. He gave glad tidings. So people have the choice now. They have the choice to know that if they follow, then they will be rewarded. If they disobey, they will be punished. So with all this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done, some people are still de denying the day of judgment. They are still denying resurrection. They cannot understand how would a body be resurrected, be recreated again after it became clay, it became dust, it became nothing. Well, just we have to think about a fact. It's much easier to have resurrection than to create everything from, from nothing. Because the things that are resurrected were already there. They are originally there. But creating them from the beginning is something that's amazing, something that's a miracle. Resurrection is not something as hard to be done. Resurrection is easy. It was easy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything. It was so easy to create everything by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is easy to resurrect people, to get them into account. Now, so with these proofs, it's better for you not to keep denying the day of judgment. Better for you, for, for this group, to believe in the day of judgment. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty, will shift now from talking about these amazing things that he has created. So he will shift to talk about the day of judgment the day of sorting and what will happen during that day so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start talking about the day of judgment by saying Inna yawm al -fasli kana min qata. so verily the day of decision is a fixed time. What is fossil? Fossil is to separate things. So there will be a separation. There will be a sorting in the day of judgment for the winners and the losers. For those who followed the rules and for those who did not follow the rules. For those who worshipped and for those who denied. So, يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ كَانَ مِقَاتَ This day of judgment is a set appointment. فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ فَلَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ When the time comes, then they won't shift it a minute, a, a, a second, forward or back, backward. يوم الفصل كان ميقاتا. The day of judgment, of judgment, nobody knows when it will be. But everybody is sure that those, the believers, I mean, those believers will know that the day of judgment will start for all people at the second of their death. How? Because when they die, when people die, they will know where their final destination will be. Is it paradise or hellfire? This is why people, believers, al-mu'minun, as-salihun, they try 
their best to do whatever they, they can. If we stop for a second here, we will uh, remember the hadith, the narration of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَنْ يَدْخُلَ أَحَدٌ الْجَنَّةَ بِعَمَلِهِ No one will enter paradise by their deeds. إِلَّا بِرَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Except for the rahmatullah, except for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get everybody, everybody, who is, whoever is going to be in paradise. So they will get in paradise because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالُوا وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, even you? He said, even me, unless illa an yatagamadani, Allahu bi rahmati, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy on me. So now, okay, we have to stop for a second. So why are we go doing good deeds then? We can depend on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we are in, uh, in paradise. Okay, now, let's talk a little bit about why. In Jannah, there are uh, levels in Jannah. In each level, there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared things for the people who are entering Jannah for each level that for each level, the bounties and the khair is different from that in the other heaven, in the higher heaven. So we are getting into Jannah by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we are placed, our rank in Jannah, our level in Jannah, the step we will be in Jannah, the maqam we will be in Jannah is according to our deeds, is according to our good deeds. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ We need to have good heart, sound heart. So this is what we are working on in this dunya. So يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ كَانَ بِقَاتَ يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ is a set appointment that we are going, all of us, we are going to go and to have this appointment. Who will have a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ فَتَأْتُونَ أَفْوَاجًا So, the day when the trumpet will be blown and you shall come forth in crowds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order the angel to blow the trumpet to start the day of judgment so that people will come uh, again. So how would people come? Afwaja, in groups. One group after the other. So what are these groups? Each nation will come with its messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ إِنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ On the day we call people by their messengers. To receive the records. Each and every person in the day of judgment will wish that they belong to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even the prophets. What an honor for us. What a great blessing for us that we are chosen to be of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa will practice mercy on that day for his nation. Each and every prophet will be on his pulpit of light in the day of judgment, except for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa His pulpit is empty. He will be running from hellfire to, to paradise. He, he, he will keep arguing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he gets his ummah. Into Jannah. 
So كل أناس يدعون بإمامهم يا حبيبي يا رسول الله A blessing that that's, that suffices us We are of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Also as we said each, each uh, there will be groups there will be groups of liars there will be groups of those who got unlawful sustenance the groups of people who admire their accounts their actions groups of people who are bad to each other groups of people who are bad to their neighbors group of people who are proud of themselves every single there are groups of everything that you can imagine. Groups of people who backbite, groups of people who uh, do bad things, group of people who spread bad news, group of people who, who would um, make people desperate. Groups. So people will come. تَأْتُونَ أَفْوَاجَ وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابَ And the heavens shall be opened and it will become gates so what does the heaven shall be opened in surah to ibrahim ayah 48 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yawma tubaddalu al-ardu ghayra al-ardi was-samawat on the day the earth will be replaced by another earth and the heavens as well so everything will change skies will change the earth will change everything so if the earth will change so what will happen to the mountains and the mountains shall be moved away shall be removed from their places and they will be as a mirage no more mountains their function that they were used, uh, that they were doing in this dunya, halas, there is no need for it. In Surah Al-Qari'ah, Ayah 5, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُ كَالْعِهْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ So the mountains, the huge mountains that we see now, they will be like wool, fluffed up. In Surah Taha, he says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْجِبَالِ فَقُلْ يَنْسِفُهَا رَبِّي نَسْفَ so, and when they ask you about the mountains, some say, my Lord will blow, the, will blow them away with a blast. No more mountains. So, what's going on now? Everybody will be facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone is going to get their deeds with them to be scaled in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for those, for those who are losers, something is waiting for them. Inna jahannama kanat mirsada. So hellfire is waiting in preparation. Waiting for those who will be thrown in it. So in Surah Al-Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَكَادُ تَمَيَّزُ مِنَ الْغَيْظِ It's waiting, it's almost bursting with rage. When people are thrown in it, and uh, uh, it will be asked, هَلِ امْتَلَأْتِ Are you full? And then the fire will, will say, هَلْ مِنْ مزيد? Will there be more? I'm ready for more. I'm prepared for more. So waiting for those who will who will be thrown in it. And what a loss it, it will be. What a loss this is. The final destination for those who are not preparing themselves for the day of judgment. Who are those? It's for those for the transgressors for the disobedience, for those who rejected. Ma'aba, it's a place of return for those people. La bithina fiha ahqaba. They will dwell therein 
for ages. They will be in it for ages. So what is ahqaba? What does ahqaba? What's the age? There, for ages, there is no specific period of time, meaning eternity. Eternity in hellfire. So the word hukub, sometimes they say the word hukba in Arabic means 70 years. So, and, and remember that each day in hellfire, uh, or in the day of judgment, equals to 1,000 years in this dunya. So whenever one period, one hukba, one period ends, come to an end, then what will happen? A new period will start. So the people of fire, of hell fire, they will stay for one period in hell fire. Then what will happen? They will be taken out. They will be taken to see the people of uh, paradise. So they will have some hope. And then they will go back to hell fire to start another, another uh, another new period. So whenever an, uh, an, a period ends, a new period will start. And they will be there in continuous punishment. So لا يذوقون فيها بردا ولا شرابا What will happen to them? Nothing cool shall they taste there in fiha in hellfire ولا شرابا nor any drink they will not find any coolness in hell they will not find any drinks in hell except so as soon as you someone hears the word except then they will start to think oh okay then there might be something good there might be some mercy but Except hamiman wa except a boiling fluid. What is that boiling fluid? It's hamim and ghassaq. So the hamima is the heat that has reached its maximum temperature. This is the type of fluid they will be offered. It was boiling and boiling and boiling and boiling, and yet there is not anything extra any more heat that can be added to that fluid. غساقة. غساقة is the pus, the sweat, the tears, the wounds of the people of hellfire. So this is their drink. This is what they are going to be offered in hellfire. Nothing cool, not a, a sip of water, except boiling fluids okay so this is the punishment but why why is all that punishment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we have not treated them unfairly no jaza and wifaqa so all of this punishment is an exact fitting recompense it's just a punishment. A punishment that's in accordance with their wicked deeds, which they did during their lives. They did not believe in anything. They did not want to believe in anything. They did not want to do anything that will benefit them in their day after. Why? Because إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا لَا يَرْجُونَ حِسَابًا For verily, they used not to look for a reckoning. They did not believe in the fact that they will be resurrected and they will be held accountable for their deeds. So if someone does not believe in punishment, then he can do anything. So, if, the, if there is no 
system, then there will be chaos. They did not want to believe that there is a day after. And that's why they did everything. Whatever they wanted, they were hideous. They did not believe. They, they did bad things to themselves, not knowing that they will be punished for everything they for everything they will be doing. If we want to ask the question, what would prevent someone from doing anything bad? The first question will be the conscious. When someone has uh, in, in himself the idea that whatever I'm doing, Allah is looking at me. Whatever I'm saying, Allah is looking at me. Whatever I'm dealing with, Allah is looking. We have to have ihsan in all our deeds. Because we know that Allah has assigned two angels on our shoulders. They are writing the good deeds and the bad deeds. But then, they did not believe in that. They did not uh, want to believe that they will be held accountable for their deeds. There is not a voice inside them to tell them that Allah is overwatching us and Allah is going to get us on the day of judgment to get us uh, uh, punished or rewarded. So they they treated our signs as false. They used to deny all the evidences of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They denied all his proofs. But we have preserved everything in records. All the deeds are uh, recorded. So all of us are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us are going to be in front of him. All our deeds will be presented to him. And it will be scaled for us. And Sayyidina Umar says, Man wajada khayran If someone finds good, then he has to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Waman wajada ghayra dhalik, fala yaluman la illa nafsa. And if he finds something else, then he should blame only himself because he... Uh, did that for himself. Taste the fruits of your deeds. They will continue increasing in torment forever. So we will stop here inshallah. But next time we will be talking about the winners, the righteous people, inshallah. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا الله please pass our salam and regards to سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and we finish by وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته